I believe we are now at a constitutional tipping point in our system. It's a dangerous point for our system to be in. And I believe that your response has to begin before this president leaves office. No one in our system goes it alone. That was constitutional law professor Jonathan Turley testifying at a House committee hearing on executive overreach by this president. Jonathan Turley joins me now. Jonathan, welcome. Great to have you here Thank this you. morning. Thank you. You know, you talk about this as, as being dangerous. Uh, you also say that you have supported a lot and do support a lot of the president's policies, but that you feel that we're at a, quote, constitutional tipping point. Explain that for us. Well, you know, our system is incredibly resilient. It's been through wars and depression and civil unrest. Uh, but the system itself is based on this notion of three bodies that, that, that's sort of in an orbit uh, that is balanced. They're locked together, the three branches of government. And that tripartite system, as it's called, uh, protects civil liberties, protects individual rights, because it prevents any one branch from assuming so much power that it becomes dominant. Well, what we're seeing, and it's not, it didn't begin with President Obama, but it certainly accelerated under President Obama, is the concentration of power in the executive branch. And we are at a point that I consider quite dangerous. It's not that President Obama is a dictator. I'm not questioning his motivations. What I'm questioning is his means. That is, we have to stand back as citizens and accept that policies change and presidents change. The one thing that can't change is the system that has served us so well. That system is, in fact, changing, in my view. You say that we may look back one day and really rue the day that everyone just sort of sat back and watched this happen. I do. You know, what, what's so surprising to me and, uh, is that I've watched this um, destabilization occur over the course of the last two presidents. And there's not been a whimper of regret or opposition of any substance coming from Congress. That's something the framers didn't anticipate. They assumed that the three branches would jealously protect uh, their own authority and also protect the other branches yeah. uh, from intrusion. I, but we now have two branches that are virtu virtually inert, the legislative and judicial branches. It, that, I mean, that, that's what is so very shocking here. When you talk about the system that was set up, I mean, it didn't, it didn't, ever foresee, I don't think, two of the branches just sort of lying down and taking it. And that, that's what you're saying we're watching happen here. Well, that is rather curious because one of the things that we teach our children in school uh, from the Federalist Papers is that James Madison anticipated that ambition would combat ambition, that they believed they had right. the perfect system. Uh, but really, they did not anticipate the level of enabling that has occurred, particularly through Congress, where they have become quite passive as their authority has shifted to the executive branch. Why do you branch. think that is? Why would that be? Do they not care? Are they you know, too busy doing something else? Uh, why? <laughs> well, it is a good question. One would think that self-preservation alone would dictate some action. I think part of it is this, this common view that all f is fair in love and politics, that we have such a poisonous political environment mm -hmm. that members don't seem to want to consider what the long-term implications are of a president who can circumvent the legislative branch, can effectively become a government unto himself. That's the type of danger we're looking at. And what worries me is that constitutional ground is very easy to lose, yeah. but to regain it comes at a very high cost. Yeah. I've heard you talk about, you know, the, the passion, you know, when you were younger, and I think you said you were a page on the Hill, yeah. that people had a, a passion for, for the process and, and a passion for the rules and how, how almost, almost a, a religious, you know, feeling about how important they were to maintain. And, you know, we should point out that one of the, one of the most egregious examples that, that you and others have pointed to is the way the president has rewritten the rules of, of the law on, on his Health Care Act without Cong with Congress barely blinking an eye. Well, it is a great concern because many of these uh, changes are occurring in areas where the president asked for legislation and was rejected. And then he turned around and did it unilaterally. The fact that I happen to agree with some of those policies doesn't change the fact that I think the means are wrong. And you're right. You know, when I, I remember as a congressional page when there were people walking those halls of Congress that did put away party alliances. They did fight for their institution the way James Madison uh, really anticipated. Uh, those voices are, are remarkably few in Congress. And I was astonished uh, in the hearing when, we te when I testified 
that this was not a point where all members could agree upon. You know, they could certainly disagree on policy, but to watch their power usurped by another branch, which think, would, you would think would concentrate the minds of all members. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's shocking, really, when, when you put it that way. Uh, and perhaps you should run for Congress, because, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I mean, what you're saying is that, that people, members of Congress, used to say, look, I have my feelings about policy, but, but I'm also here to uphold the system as we know it. And even when I agree with what is being done, I can't stand by and watch it happen if, if it, you know, if it usurps the Constitution. So, I mean, that we're clearly not seeing. Uh, and perhaps it's reflected in the approval numbers that are dismally low uh, for Congress. <laughs> Jonathan Turley, thank you very much. Great having you with us. Thank you.